Although the president continues to tout that his health care law is lowering costs, well, Americans don't seem to agree. That's according to some new polls out that show just how skeptical Americans are about Obamacare. Joining me now is Vital Spring Technologies CEO, Dr. Sridhar Puraratsu. Dr. P, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. So let's talk Thank about you, this. just how skeptical are people. What are they saying in this Kaiser poll? Well, about 20% of them are talking about the impact that these new plans in Obamacare is having in terms of it being affordable. And a big reason for that is many of these people are really not working that much. So about 20% of them have said that they're working maybe, you know, a couple of hours a day, five days a week. And the plans that are being offered huh. are simply not sustainable on those meager incomes. The here's second what, here's key, what we yeah. see from the poll. So 36% saying, and this is to Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, these are not people who are left or right. These are people who care about health care. 36% right. say it's just too expensive, and that's the primary reason that they're not buying health insurance. Uh, what does this mean long term for Americans' health if they're, not, if they're not getting coverage? If they're not getting coverage, what means that eventually those people that are supposed to be in the system will end up showing up in the system because they can get coverage at some point when they're much sicker. And what that does to the risk pool, obviously, is ultimately raise costs and raise premiums. And we're going to see that happen eventually now when the new plan year begins, as insurance companies have now been struggling to get information on the risk and the conditions of individuals that have signed up. And many of them are saying that they have, you know, almost a third of the information that they would normally get in terms of pricing. So when these wow. people don't show up in the system or show up later, eventually they're going to have to raise premiums in order to compensate for that. Uh, more and more people are saying that they don't regard uh, Obamacare favorably. 46% are unfavorable on Obamacare when they're polled. Only 36% are favorable. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about all the things that have gone wrong with healthcare.gov. I mean, over the years, it's unbelievable to me that the many problems. Now the government's going to spend an additional $121 million this year to fix the website. I mean, how much money can we throw after bad here? Do you think there comes a point where we have to stop spending on this? I think that the time is now uh, where we have to put the brakes. I think that uh, the likes of Paul Ryan or John Boehner or others, I think, need to get very aggressive in terms of putting parameters around what we're allowed to spend and putting a budget in place to say that there are going to be clear milestones that have to be met, either with the website or even more importantly in ensuring that the back-end systems for healthcare.gov are actually in place and how much it's going to cost. Because the notion here is that there is a blank check to continue to either pay for the things that didn't work or to create an open-ended account for things that yet haven't been built. And I think that's completely unreasonable. Well, well Dr. I, P, I think that this blank check idea is the theme of the show tonight. We were talking about gas taxes and fixing highways. It seems like uh, that's right. this administration in particular wants to spend any, everything they can, anytime they can. You talked that's about right. the back end of the website. I'm curious about that. How far away is it from being ready for prime time? It's a long way off, and that's the, really the biggest concern. We spoke about this about a month ago, you know, even when enrollment was ending. But the bigger issue now is in terms of processing those payments. And when insurance companies, I said earlier, are challenged with the amount of data that they're not getting in terms of understanding the risk, we're going to start seeing a lot of things in terms of falling through the cracks when people are not able to get into the doctor's offices or the wrong information is going into people's accounts, uh, which I hear, uh, you know, is happening, uh, that's a bit scary. And all of that is symptomatic of the fact that the communication between the insurance company systems, between healthcare.gov, between the enrollment systems is not synchronized the way that it should. Not and that's going to cost a lot more. And let me tell you, uh, there are people out there who think they have coverage. They get to the doctor's office and they don't. Yeah. Uh, there are people who, who think they bought a particular kind of coverage. That's not, in fact, what they have. Lots of mistakes, lots of errors still continuing. And, you know, the media has moved on, right? This isn't getting attention anymore. So we really appreciate, Dr. P, you're coming on and telling us about it tonight. Thank you so much.